Hello. In the last video, we have discussed finite differences as one opportunity to approximate gradients and also Hessians of optimization functions. In this video, I would like to discuss symbolic differentiation as an alternative to that. And symbolic differentiation is pretty straightforward. You very likely already know it uh, quite well, because that is basically apply the calculus rules, the differential rules, you are already knowing from high school or university mathematical lectures. To give you just a very cartoonic and simple example, what I mean with that is, if we have some optimization cost function like L of W is W square, what we would do is, by pen and paper, or as we will see just in a second with computing code, we are going to write down the, in this case, the gradient or eventually also the Hessian of the cost function based on the normal calculus rules. So for example, the gradient of L in this case would be, often, uh, would be of course, two times W. So what we, what we would do with that example or with this information, would we, we would basically put it into programming code. So for example, in Julia, we would write down a function dl of w is two times w, right? And then we would implement the gradient or eventually then also the Hessian of this function as a computing code, as a function, right? So that is uh, basically all around symbolic differentiation we already need to know. So we apply the normal calculus rules and we try to make a specific program, a specific function which only purpose is to describe the gradient information and eventually also the Hessian information. In, let's say, the old days, that was really done by pen and paper, so mathematicians or engineers or whomever really wrote down the gradients and the Hessians and that was then implemented as computing code. And as you may, uh, can imagine, that was quite tedious. So what you do normally today is you utilize also programming code for that, so basically symbolic toolboxes, symbolic computing languages, which can do the application of the calculus rules for you in an automated or semi-automated fashion. And for that we will also look at a little Julia example, uh, basically using the symbolic .jl toolbox of Julia in order to do that and to discuss a little bit what advantages and also what potential disadvantages the symbolic differentiation has. For this, I would like to look at a famous um, example from the lecture books, the so-called logistic map example, which is basically a recursive equation. So uh, L of 1, W is basically just W, so just a scalar function. And then in a polynomial fashion, functions Li plus 1 of W are 4 times L uh, i of w times 1 minus l i of w. So basically a polynomial function which we build up. And with the symbolics.jl toolbox what we do here is we define w and the differential of w as symbolic expressions. And then based on the logistic map example we write down the first four orders of the symbolic map as um, functions depending on our symbolic expression w which is L1, L2, L3, and L4. And what I want to do now is I want to apply the calculus rules using the differential operator with the symbolics.jl toolbox. And if we do so, the nice thing is that this works quite well. So if we calculate the derivative dl1, so we calculate the derivative of w with respect to w, that is obviously a 1, or if we take the derivative of uh, our L2, which would be 4 times W times uh, 1 minus W, we obviously get minus 4W plus 4 minus 1W and so on. So that is quite nice. However, what we can observe from that, especially if we go to higher orders like the uh, logistic map of order 4, here especially down there, that is really a big, big e expression. So if we look at this entire expression here, it actually goes further along this way. So this is only a part of the fraction. Actually, we can go uh, here to the, to the left. No, not working. Now it's working. So this is like a really long expression, actually. 
And what that is called is a so-called expression swell, basically meaning if we have long expressions, like long functions which are interconnected, then applying the calculus rules, like for example the multiplication rule, that will lead to very long expressions where we need to store a lot of intermediate results and also a lot of intermediate memory demand is generated by that. So the first con argument against symbolic differentiation is a so-called expression swell. So in this case we would have an exponential growth of the number of coefficients we need to store with the increasing order of that logistic map, which basically comes from this uh, issue of, for example, interconnected functions as L of W could be, for example, an F of W times an G of W, and in this case, if I'm interested into the gradient of L, that would be then the gradient of F, times g plus f times the gradient of g and so on. And if you consider that as an interconnected, if f and g are then again interconnected functions of other functions, so this expression gets longer and longer and longer. So we have like very lengthy expressions which are not easy to handle. And so that will lead to memory demand and of course also to long uh, intermediate solutions. Another issue we would need to evaluate, especially when considering uh, data science for dynamical systems, is that in symbolic calculation through a model, through a cost function based on a model, normally means that we have a cost function and inside that cost function there will be some model uh, expression which is basically representing the ODE, PDE or difference equation or whatsoever. And symbolic uh, calculations rules of course apply very well to these closed form equations but what is happening if we have actually a computer program which is representing for example an ODE plus an ODE solver. So let's go through this example as well here in this notebook and what we have uh, done here is basically just a very simple ODE so x dot is 2 times x which we have implemented here as an ODE and we solve that with the built-in uh, differential equations, dot JL solver of Julia, and particularly we're making use of the Runge Kutta solver of uh, order four with a fixed step size of one tenth of a second. If we then solve that, that actually works quite well. And what we see is here that using this symbolic expression of x0, maybe I go back a little bit. So here I have defined x0 as a symbolic expression. So basically we solve this ODE for a general x0, that works quite well through this ODE solver. So we see basically that the results of the different time steps depend on x0. So we could basically throw in any x0 and uh, calculate the system response depending on this initial condition. So that also means, of course, that in this case, I can calculate the uh, differential expressions for example, the solution at the second time step with respect to x would be then of course just 1.22, which is basically this expression up here. So that basically means that we can calculate the differential in this scenario. However, that only worked because the code which we have defined here is a static code or a quasi-static code because we have defined the runge kutta solver in its fixed step size variant. So that means that we are able to roll out the computing code in order to evaluate the um, ODE in a static fashion. So the entire code is set in stone when we compile it and that means that the symbolic solver can go through this code and calculate the solutions and eventually the derivatives. If we do not use the static code variant of the runge kutta solver, so if we define the very same problem but just using the standard runge kutta of fourth order, which will lead to an adaptive step sizing. So that means that the algorithm of how to solve the ODE might be varied during runtime because we are increasing or decreasing our step size depending on the internal rules of the solver. That will lead to a non-static, to a dynamic coding of the ODE or, or of the ODE solver. And that 
leads to the issue, as we can see here, that the symbolic toolbox throws an issue. So that means that symbolic differentiation through computing programs also comes at certain limitations regarding the control flow, regarding the evaluation of interconnected computing functions. So therefore, the closed form solution has uh, the requirement of static code. There are also certain other computing requirements which depend on the specific toolbox and the specific programming language you're using, but definitely static code requirement is one of the basic examples. So that means that symbolic differentiation cannot be used the entire time for all implementations of computing code, especially if I'm using multiple sub-packages like uh, the ordinary differential equation solver and so on. However, there are of course also uh, positive elements about it, which I would like to mention here, and that is of course that if I apply the symbolic uh, differentiation, that the symbolic differentiation as such is not any kind of approximation, it is basically the ideal and very accurate solution of the gradient or the Hessian. So we have a very high accuracy. So it is accurate. And also, if we have small problems where these requirements, especially the static code requirement, applies, then that can be also quite efficient because we can calculate much of the derivatives beforehand, before runtime, and then reutilize it during runtime. So especially for small problems, it might be also very fast. So very fast for small problems. However, in the everyday routine of applying machine learning data science based solutions to dynamic modeling problems, we can also see that symbolic differentiation is not the go-to approach in order to get the gradient and the Hessian information, especially due to these negative elements, in particular also the requirement of static code. So that means applying symbolic differentiation can very often lead to computing errors or to, as we have seen, errors in the execution of the computing code. So that's why in the following two videos we will discuss the so-called automatic or algorithmic differentiation, which is somehow an extension of the symbolic differentiation based on automated computing graphs, as we will see next. Thank you for watching and see you then.